Hey SP fam, welcome back to the channel. It's me, Bella the Steak and Butter Gal. I hope you all are having a Gouda meat fuel day. I'm filming this video to give you guys a heads up on some things that I've discovered. Updating you guys on some things that are concerning. And it has everything to do with my favorite carnivore staples, specifically butter and eggs. So I'm gonna give you guys a little backstory. I went to Costco last night to do the usual grocery shopping stocking up on my carnivore staples. I usually visit Costco with Steak and Butter Guy once a week, sometimes once every two weeks, just depending on how quickly we go through our groceries. So we drive to Costco last night and I go in, as usual, straight to the meat department. I get my favorite meats, by the way. I was very happy to see that they had flank and short ribs in stock for $9.99 a pound. Pro tip, flank and short ribs are the best cut of meat, especially if you are tired of your usual go-to carnivore meals. Try flank and short ribs. I'll put in snippets of, um, you know, the groceries that I got, how I cook my favorite staples, but this is more about the concerning news. So I get my favorite meats, I get my beef, and I walk to the dairy section. And you know how there's this huge freezing room for the dairy products. I walk in there and I go straight to the eggs first because I am ready to stock up on eggs. I have been eating about like five to 12 eggs a day. I love my eggs. They're such a big part of my carnivore diet. So I walk up to the eggs and I see a sign stuck right above every single type of egg that they sell. Limit two on eggs. I have never seen this sign before ever at any Costco that I've ever visited. I was shocked because usually every time I go to Costco, I'll get like three to four, sometimes five boxes of eggs because I go through them so quickly. I'm actually very curious if you're watching and you love shopping at Costco, you get eggs from Costco. Have you seen this sign at your local Costco's lately? Because this was the first time I saw this limit two on eggs at mine. And I asked if I could do two eggs two boxes of eggs for each different type of brand that they sell. And they're like, nope, two boxes of eggs for anything. And if that wasn't tragic enough, I noticed that the usual Wilcox pasture raised eggs are now Wilcox free range eggs. And I'll put snippets because I recorded everything when I went to Costco last night. So I didn't see any pasture raised eggs available as an option at all. I only saw the Wilcox free range and the Kirkland brand free range. So I got two boxes of eggs. And then I went to the butter section because I always stock up on a bunch of butter at Costco. It is just hands down the cheapest price that you get per block per ounce. The butter prices are going up. I don't know if you guys are seeing butter prices going up, but where I am, butter has gone up $1.50 at least. It used to be $4 and something cents, and now it has literally gone up to above $5 for each Kerrygold block of butter. So that's why the last time I went to Whole Foods, I didn't buy any butter. I instead just planned on stocking up on Kerrygold butter at Costco. The price is still reasonable. Thank goodness. It is $14.49 for four blocks of Kerrygold butter, which means each block is $3.60 roughly. And that again is so much cheaper than $5.50 for one block of Kerrygold. So I reach for the Kerrygold unsalted and I check the ingredients. Anytime I'm at the grocery store now, I always check the ingredients. And I think that's a really good habit to build because you just never know what your favorite brands are doing to their ingredients. You never know if you're buying a new bacon, if there's sugar, a bunch of preservatives. It's always smart to check the ingredients before you pay for the product. So I check the ingredients of this Kerrygold unsalted butter. And I noticed something very concerning. The ingredients read pasteurized cream, skimmed milk, and cultures. Three ingredients, pasteurized cream, skimmed milk, cultures. I know for a fact that skimmed milk ingredient was not part of the list the last time I checked Kerrygold unsalted butter. So I'm confused, I'm shocked, and I reach for the salted Kerrygold butter. And I noticed that there is no skimmed milk in the ingredients of the salted Kerrygold. The ingredients are literally pasteurized cream and salt. 
and actually I got both of them brought it home just so I can really investigate further okay so I have both of the Kerrygold um, products sold at Costco this gold one is the salted one and this silver one is the unsalted now if you guys have been following my journey for a while you guys know that I don't need salt to feel my best I actually prefer to not eat salt so when I buy my butters I always go for unsalted butter. But if you compare the ingredients list, unsalted one has pasteurized cream, skimmed milk, cultures. That's it. Salted one has pasteurized cream, salt. That's it. So there's no cultures, there's no skimmed milk in the salted one, whereas this unsalted one has two extra unnecessary ingredients. So I wonder, did they add these recently just to boost the flavor of unsalted butter? because I definitely don't need that. And if adding skimmed milk adds extra processing, processed foods, skimmed milk powders, how will that affect how I feel? How will that affect my sensitive long haul healers who have autoimmune issues, who want to eat high fat carnivore to expedite their healing? I'm sure the skimmed milk and the cultures could very well intervene with healing and affect how great us sensitive carnivores feel. I already opened this unsalted box and I used a whole block last night. I had half, Steak and Butter Guy had half. By the way, Steak and Butter Guy is eating so much more butter these days. I think it's because he's listening to all the interviews that I'm doing. He's really being more and more open-minded about incorporating more fats in the carnivore diet. Honestly, just him being carnivore, I'm happy. I have nothing to complain about, but I think he's feeling very inspired just seeing how I eat super high fat carnivore and he's trying to follow along and integrate more fats. But anyways, I had half of this block, he had half of this block, and just a quick update on how I feel today, the very next day. No adverse reactions, no negative symptoms, didn't affect my sleep, I feel very energetic today, no inflammation, no reactions in my skin, no breakouts. So I think so far so good, but still I am very concerned about this skimmed milk extra ingredient um, that I have not seen before that every time that I check the ingredients list. And why isn't it in the salted butter one? Cause the salted one is very clean, pasteurized cream and salt, that's it. I bought the salted one because steak and butter guy prefers salted butter if he's going to snack on it as a snack. If you guys have any thoughts about what I shared regarding the butter, comment it down below. I would like to know if you are also seeing butter prices increase where you guys are. It's pretty heartbreaking because I buy so much butter. And here's some screenshots just for some more insight about all of this. This is a screenshot from Kerrygold themselves and they say skim milk is used for a better flavor profile. I personally do not taste any improvement in the flavor when I tried the skimmed milk version Kerrygold butter yesterday night. But thank you Marilyn and the Keto Prescription for sharing this screenshot email. And here are some thoughts from my carnivore friends for what they think about this new ingredient list. Coach Steven thinks it's for no other reason than to increase profit, and Dr. Kiltz thinks it lowers the fat content and adds sugar. But since we're on the topic of butter, might as well show you my entire collection of fats that I always have on hand. Alternative options, just in case butter gives you adverse reactions, especially if this new ingredient list in the Kerrygold Unsalted gives you negative reactions. I will keep you updated on how I personally feel with this Kerrygold Unsalted because obviously I'm gonna finish this box that I bought. First product that I wanna share with you guys, ghee. Now ghee is the most similar product to butter, but it's more gentle. Firstly, it is clarified. So ghee no longer has the trace amounts of lactose and those trace amounts can tend to inflame my sensitive carnivores. If you are lactose intolerant, and I know a lot of Asians tend to be lactose intolerant, um, butter, can make you inflamed. It can trigger issues, which is why ghee is a beautiful alternative, especially if you need your fats. I personally love the flavor of ghee, but just two days ago, I asked my steak and butter gang community what they think about ghee. And a lot of my members said that they hate the flavor of ghee. They don't like that grainy consistency and texture of ghee. All of those things I really like. I personally really enjoy the graininess and that texture. I find it adds to the mouthfeel, um, but 
I get it, sometimes the flavor of ghee can be very overpowering, it can be a turnoff. I do find that different brands have different flavors in their ghee, and I really like Thrive Market's flavor. It's more neutral, it's not as strong and overpowering, and the graininess is not extreme, as you guys can see. So this is the inside of the ghee. You can see that it's actually pretty smooth. If you like your ghee, nice and soft and spreadable i would just keep it at room temperature or let it melt at room temperature but i just put it in the fridge now if you do love your butter and you can tolerate the butter you feel fantastic on butter i've really been loving vital farms unsalted butter lately and again why do i go for unsalted butter as opposed to salted butter i just personally prefer my flavors without that salty flavor i don't need salt to excite my palate and i also don't need salt to feel my best i've experimented with salt before adding it in having a little bit of it having none of it and every time i experiment with salt i just find i feel my best i perform my best without any salt. I personally don't eat salt, but that does not mean you should cut out salt from your diet. In fact, since we're on the topic of electrolytes, I think electrolytes are extremely important if you are new to carnivore. If you're coming to carnivore and transitioning slowly from keto, standard American diet, vegan diet, whatever it is, if you're new to this lifestyle, I recommend leaning on electrolytes. I'll use my boyfriend's steak and butter guy as an example. He's still relatively new to carnivore. And on top of that, he's extremely active. He goes to the gym every day. He breaks a sweat every single day. I recently posted a video of getting the carnivore flu. I suspected his electrolytes were imbalanced. He didn't supplement with enough electrolytes. And that was exactly what happened. When I cooked him those recovery meals and drinks utilizing electrolytes, he felt better within three days so if you guys want a good recommendation for high quality electrolytes you're new to carnivore i recommend element because they are extremely high quality and you know exactly what they put in the ingredients like i said always check the ingredients and this flavor that they offer is called the raw unflavored version and the ingredients are literally sodium potassium and magnesium that's it no fillers no stevia no flavorings no dyes nothing but these three electrolytes which is why i get it over and over again steak and butter guy has a packet every single day it comes in a nice travel friendly little packet you rip it open pour it in your beverage of choice mix it up drink it down you're good to go and you all can get a free sample pack if you go to the url on the screen drink slash sbgal i've also linked it down below if you want a clickable link however what i've noticed within the steak and butter gang i've seen a lot of my members start off with carnivore really supplementing heavy with the electrolytes and over time they no longer need these supplements they really just rely on salting to taste and that is enough the key is just enough time just give your body enough time to adapt and it will tell you what it needs so anyways back to this butter that i've been loving it's from vital farms and again i get their unsalted butter this is what their packaging looks like this is what their sticks of butter look like and if you look at the ingredients the ingredients are literally pasteurized cream. That's it. And that's what I expect on all of my favorite unsalted butters. Kerrygold Unsalted has pasteurized cream, skimmed milk, and cultures. Vital Farms is literally just pasteurized cream. I've been getting this a lot lately because at my local Whole Foods, it was on sale for an extended amount of time. So I got like six boxes of their unsalted. This is actually my very last box and my very last stick. So I'll finish this tonight probably, and then I will really monitor how I feel on the Kerrygold Unsalted, now with added skimmed milk. And the final fat that I have been using, depending on my mood and what flavor profile I want to incorporate in my meals, is this jar of pure tallow. It's from the brand Fatworks, and it is marketed as premium cooking oil made from grass-fed beef. So the beauty and magic of tallow is that this is the ultimate gentle fat. If you are an autoimmune healer, if you're a long haul healer, if you are just extremely sensitive and you're going through histamine intolerances, oxalate dumping, and you just wanna break from all of the symptoms, tallow is by far the gentlest fat. It is the least problematic fat because it is literally just beef fat. 100% grass-fed 
beef fat. Tallow is rendered beef fat. If you want to go a step further and be even more gentle on your body, I would not go for the rendered fat and instead go for the raw beef fat, which is called suet or beef fat trimmings. So some tips for you guys there. Um, you can get beef tallow at any grocery store. I got this online from Thrive Market. Uh, but if you want the untouched, unrendered beef fat, suet, beef fat trimmings, go to your local butcher shops. You can even call ahead of time just to make sure they have any, and they tend to sell beef fat trimmings and suet for dirt cheap because a lot of these butcher shops, they throw it away anyways, and I've actually gotten bags and bags of them for free, zero dollars completely free. But anyways, tallow is great. It is an excellent option for my high fat carnivores and it is gentle. If you guys eat salted butter, I would continue to just eat the Kerrygold salted butter because the ingredients are still perfect. There's no skimmed milk in the salted one. It's just pasteurized cream and salt. But with my unsalted Kerrygold butter lovers and longtime eaters, just a heads up, their ingredients have changed. I'm gonna wrap up this video. Again, I would love to know your thoughts on everything that I shared. Comment them down below. I love reading through the comments. So let me know what you've discovered, your insights, thoughts on all of this down below. And if you wanna connect with me more, I tend to share what I'm doing in real time on Instagram, in my stories. I literally shared all of my stories going to Costco last night, the moment I saw everything. And I got so many DMs from you on Instagram, just replying to the things that I shared. So I love connecting with you all there. I love posting reels, quick, concise, fun, entertaining hacks, tips, and recipes there. And I also love posting polls to give you guys the power to decide on what type of videos I should post next on new new. The polls that I ask for help on tend to be on what video I should post next, what guest speaker I should invite on next, what type of topics I should record with Steak and Butter Guy or when I have round tables. Sometimes I do put up polls on things more personal beyond content creation and YouTube and Instagram stuff. For community support, 24 seven guidance and accountability, come join the Steak and Butter Gang. I host every single month, 30 day carnivore challenges featuring amazing guest speakers, the greatest carnivore doctors, the greatest carnivore specialists every single month and you get seven to eight hours of live zoom calls to connect with me and my team of carnivore coaches you guys can go to spgmeetup.com to join the community or check out the links down below i will see you all in my next video i wish you all a beautiful rest of your day spg out